Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna go through a little bit of a good thing to have in your toolkit if you are trying to write a job application and you need a web server. And I actually was required to do this for one thing at work. I wanted to create a little tool and I thought that some part of the inputs could be easily done through a web server. But I went out, looked for different libraries. I found one called Undertow that was built by Oracle and it did work for some things, but sadly it had very bad documentation and perhaps was, wasn't maintained. So it was really hard to actually figure out how to fix things when they actually broke. Uh, and that's it a part with maintaining code and trying to implement things that is important, that you actually have people using it and good documentation. Because if something is documented or if there is somebody that has the same problem on Stack Overflow, you will have a much easier time to actually find the solution. So finally, I scrapped all of it and found something that was called an HTTP server inside of Java. I might have used it before and might have forgotten about it, but it was so easy to implement and so easy to do uh, work with that I didn't really understand what I needed a library. I just thought that uh, if you're writing an HTTP server, you should use a library and somebody must have solved this problem. Yes, the people that actually wrote Java solved that problem. So I have my little uh, example here, my HTTP server. So there is actually an HTTP server uh, implementation here. So we can take that one and let's call it HTTP server, new HTTP server. And either you implement a lot of stuff here and we don't want to do that. So I think there is an implementation of this one. Yes. Uh, so there might be a uh, simple HTTP, oh, let's see, HTTP server implementation. So that requires a socket and so HTTP, HTTP server Impl. Create new inet socket address 443 or 880. Zero. Uh, so there's inet address that is a port address, I guess. Mm -hmm. Check port. And so let's create throws an exception. Mm. Exception. See here. Print that stack trace. Let's see if we can start this up and see what we get. Yeah. We didn't get any errors. HTTP server start. See if that works. We have something running. So let's uh, open uh, Google Chrome here. Put it over here. Localhost 8080. No context for this request. So we actually have a working server now. That's good. So let's see if we we put this a little bit more to the side here. Then we will create from this HTTP server, we can create a context. And let's say that this context is a slash and that will give us an HTTP context. So HTTP slash 
C. And if we run this one, we actually should have a context, but we don't have any handler for that context. We get an internal server error. There is no handler. So here we can create, we can uh, set an handler. Uh, either we set a handler there, like this, and this will take an exchange. And we can do like that, perhaps. So this is actually a function. Uh, maybe not. Uh, new my handler. And this should just implement uh, one function. Handler, yeah. So this should only implement one function. It's called handle. It takes, uh, it gives you an HTTP exchange, and this exchange could have uh, a request body, request headers, and a request method and URI. So if we take that one, print that out, we will get the actual URI. And we can also take this exchange and send response headers. Uh, so, for instance, we can send 200 zero. So this is what response code should we send and how much data. So if we stop this one and start it again and run over here, I believe we will get an error here as well because it expect us to actually close that stream so we have something that will take data here uh, but we we have said that it will be zero long but we still need to actually send something over there so let's see here response output stream Good stream and we can Close that output stream. If we do that, we should get, yeah. So now it's actually tells us that somebody went to slash. If we say, uh, let's see if I can uh, edit here. Uh, I want that. Hello equals to you. We see that we get that string over here, so we can actually interpret the input, like what actually gets in there. Um, we can also output the actual um, method. So the request method, that should be a get. So we can actually create something that handles posts if we get the post request instead and if we get that we will need to read uh, the request body uh, oh there was a response body sorry the request body and that's an input stream so we have all of those tools uh, that we can work with let's do something with this output stream we need to have some kind of output so let's have a data output stream and uh, yeah. let's take this and we write some bytes let's say that we want to write the string um, and let's do an h1 so it will be large hello world this is my small implementation of an Java web <laughs> server. Oh my god, typing is hard. And we need to close that brackets as well. And let's say string length here. So we actually say how long will this output be? And here we can actually write s get bytes. 
So if we restart this server, stop and restart, it will come up and when we load it, we will actually get this output as our return value from our HTTP server. So this was a little bit of what I wanted to uh, handle today and talk about. Um, in this, this HTTP context we have here, we can actually add some filters both before the data comes into the web server and after we actually have created our web page. So there is a lot of things that you can extend and work with. If you want to actually read files, you need to parse that data and so on. So there is a lot of manual work that you might need to do if you want to do more advanced things with this. And in that case, a library might be your choice. The problem with my, what I tried to make was a web server that do, I can upload a file to and the undertow was so buggy or undocumented on that specific use case that I couldn't really figure out how I could get the data of the actual file. Here it's very easy. I just get the pure stream and I can read and parse that as a um, simple MIME type um, uh, body uh, as you do with, for instance, emails and so on. So yeah, I think this is much more pure and easy to work with. It's uh, not that hard to set up. Uh, if you want to do more advanced things, you need to read more of the documentation, but there is a documentation and it's good. And there are a lot of people that use this, this so there are answers on Stack Overflow. So if you want to write a Java uh, web application or if you need this little piece of tooling in order to create something in your organization, um, then this could be something that you want to look into. Of course, if you want to write multiple contexts like this, it could be good to actually just append the handler to the specific context that makes the code more readable. And if you write a lot of handlers, then create specific classes for those so you can easily find the specific functionality that you want to use or that you implement so you can actually break it up and, and make a good structure of it. This is just to show you the most basic use case of a web server. Uh, I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions or other things that you want to tell me, leave them down in the comment section down below. I read everything. If you like this kind of tutorials or uh, showing you how to use specific toolings or things that you can put into your toolbox and use when you are trying to implement something specific, then please subscribe to this channel. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and I really hope to see you in the next video.